Hi everyone, in this video what I'd like to talk about is playing a synthesis using some of the reactions we've learned about alkynes. And so to do this what I'd like to focus on is question 3b from your in-class worksheet. And so what this question asks us is to synthesize this dibromide uh, species shown here from a starting material of ethyne. And so the way in which I'd really like to think about doing these types of problems is retrosynthetically. Or namely, can we think in sort of a reverse direction that will allow us to sort of see these transformations um, a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So the first step in our retrosynthetic analysis is to start with our product, our dibromide species shown here. And I've drawn this in a slightly different way than we've shown in your uh, packet, just to highlight the fact that we are indeed doing an anti-addition of uh, bromine here. So, the first thing I want you guys to be able to recognize is that there are bonds here that we know how to make, specifically the carbon bromine bonds, and I'll highlight them in red. We know from our work with alkenes that bromine, Br2, when added to an alkene, adds in an anti-fashion. So we can envision synthesizing this dibromide from the following alkene. Shown there. And so we can envision then adding in the forward direction the addition of the R2. So this alkene, when we think about it, is now a transalkene. We know how to make transalkenes using one of our partial uh, reductions of an alkyne. So let's make the following disconnection of the hydrogens. Again, I'll try to do this in red to keep this consistent. Our disconnection here and here, realizing that we can add these in a partial reduction of an alkyne. So let me draw my retrosynthetic arrow. One, two, three, triple bond. On the one side, we can see we have an ethyl group, or on the second side, we wind up having this isopropyl um, species uh, shown, excuse me, isobutyl. Uh, I messed that up, so let me just correct this right over here. So from this alkyne, we can envision doing a partial reduction to wind up forming this trans alkene. So if you remember from our work with alkynes, to do a partial reduction of an alkyne in a trans manner, we need to use what's called a dissolving metal reduction. Namely, we would treat this alkyne with metallic sodium, and I've just shown that sodium in zero with oxidation state, in a solvent of liquid ammonia. Shown there. So what this winds up doing is providing the transalkene, which when subjected to an anti-addition of bromine, yields our following product, plus it's an anti -R. So the question we now have to ask ourselves is, okay, now that we've got this alkyne, what bonds do we know how to make? And this one's a little bit tough, but remember that using deprotonated alkynes, we now know how to make certain types of carbon-carbon bonds, namely sp3, sp carbon-carbon bonds. And so let's go ahead and make a disconnection at one of our carbon-carbon bonds. And so what this will wind up looking like is the following. So when we make that disconnection, we can disconnect our alkyne into two different synthons, namely a negatively charged carbanion on the sp3 carbon of the alkyne. We know from our work with alkynes that this is actually a fairly stable molecule, and typically this will be accompanied by something like a sodium or a lithium counterion. On the other hand, we know that the positive charge that would result from sort of cleaving this bond here is not something we can really find in a bottle. So what we're going to do is take our synthon here and ask ourselves, okay, 
what type of molecular structure leads us to have a partial positive charge in a carbon? And so, when you think about this, you should think about back to about week eight of term one and imagine that, okay, if we had a really good leaving group, so one of my favorite leaving groups is iodide, we can envision a partial positive charge on this carbon shown here. So by combining these two, what we're able to accomplish is an SN2 reaction in the forward uh, uh, direction, which winds up producing our di-substituted alkyne species. And so, in reality, we're not quite done yet in the retrosynthetic analysis of our product. Namely for the fact that there's one more bond that we know how to make. And for the fact that this alkyne here isn't actually our starting material. Rather, our starting material is the starting material of acetylene or ethyne. So, let's go ahead and make this final disconnection. I'm going to draw this retrosynthetic arrow in a little bit of a diagonal manner to give us a little bit more room. And so what this tells us is that, okay, from an initial acetylide anion synthon, and remember, it turns out that these are actually fairly easy to make. You simply treat a terminal alkyne, and in this case, um, ethyne, which means it has two different carbon hydrogen bonds, which can be deprotonated with an equivalent of a very strong base. Something like sodium amide, uh, lithium hexamethyl disilazide, or LDA. And by adding in this uh, um, alkyl halide species, and again, I'll use an iodide just because I happen to like iodides, we can envision creating this carbon-carbon bond using an SN2 reaction. And so, We'll just draw in that this is indeed SN2, and a very similar SN2 reaction here. So to recap, what we did in this problem was look at our final species which we're looking for, which is this anti-alkyl dibromide, and ask ourselves, how can we synthesize this from a relatively simple starting material, in this case, ethyne? What we did in the reverse direction is realize we know how to make our carbon bromine bonds using addition of bromine to an alkene. In this case, to get our correct stereochemistry, it needs to be a transalkene. From our knowledge of alkynes, we know that if we start with an alkyne shown here and do a dissolving metal reduction, so sodium and liquid ammonia, we can produce the transalkyne needed to produce this anti-bromination shown here. This di-substituted alkyne with an ethyl and this isobutyl group on the other side can then be synthesized in a stepwise fashion from our starting material of ethyne or acetylene by deprotonating the acetylene and alkylating that twice in, in succession with two different alkyl halides. So in the forward direction, what we've managed to do is take uh, acetylene through several different steps to produce our desired product. Hopefully this helps in your study and understanding of how to use some of the reactions in our toolbox in order to synthesize more complex molecules.